Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Bob the Booker and uh, today I thought I would take some inspiration from a booktuber who um, is relatively new and who I think more people should uh, check out called uh, Shelley uh, Swearingen and um, she has created some really interesting and exciting videos. She's got some really great projects going on including a, a reading project around um, uh, children's literature which sounds fascinating um, especially as it's a thousand and one children's lit books that you should read before you die which is a lot um, it's a lot of books uh, but um, one video she made recently I thought as well was really interesting which was just sort of uh, books that she um, has taken up and sort of picked up because of booktube and you know we we, <laughs> we kind of know this as sort of a, as a community uh, in that sense that booktube is definitely one of those places where you it's kind of like when you go shopping when you're hungry right where <laughs> you you kind of go in you know just being like right I'm just gonna I just need to buy some some rice and you come out with sort of like four pizzas <laughs> like several bars of chocolate, um, an ironing board, like you, you end up with everything that you didn't necessarily think you, you needed but kind of want. Um, I mean I don't know who's necessarily impulse buying an, uh, an ironing board but there we go. Uh, but um, what I'm trying to say by that is essentially this, this happens quite a lot where you're watching videos and you suddenly think like oh that sounds really good, oh this also sounds really good, oh and like you kind of end up darting around and, and picking up um, loads of other books that you previously might not have heard of or that you maybe didn't think you were interested in and I think that's, that's the beauty of booktube right but also <laughs> it's just something that is very dangerous for the wallet. Uh, but what I thought I'd do is now that Booker season is, well we're still in Booker season, but now that I've finished the long list uh, of of the Booker Prize, I uh, feel temporarily slightly freer. Um, I mean I've still got a fair few library books to try and give back but there we go. Um, but I thought what would be really interesting to do is to look at some books that I have picked up um, and I'm really excited about reading because of various booktube people and it's also just a really fun chance to shout out some people who I love watching and who I find really really interesting um, and so with that in mind let's go. Um, so the first uh, one I really really wanted to um, shout out is a book that I I bought a while back and had been meaning, meaning to read and kind of assumed would be on the book a long list and then it wasn't and so I, it kind of naturally fell sort of further down my my reading pile um, and that is Penenka by Ronan Hessian and the reason that this sort of book is sort of you know was something I really wanted to read was partly because I heard a good few people on booktube talking about it in really interesting ways. So two people come to mind immediately for this, um, so both Sean the Book Maniac who did a really interesting interview with Ronan Hessian himself um, which was fascinating and I, I urge you to all go and check out um, and also the other person who spoke about this really well is the superior Bob, uh, Robert over at Bob Sphere um, and uh, whose name after I saw you know I started my channel saw his name and just thought like oh damn like that is a better name <laughs> than Bob the Booker like what was I thinking anyway um but uh both both of them spoke really intelligently and beautifully about the book and um I urge you to go and check out their videos I'll link leave links below uh but also this book just sounds so up my street um, this is all um, about a, oh, I'll read you the little bit of blurb, uh, Penenka has spent 25 years living with the disastrous mistakes of his past which have made him an exile in his hometown and cost him his dearest relationships. Now aged 50, Penenka begins to rebuild an improvised family, an improvised family life with his estranged daughter and her seven-year-old son, but at night Penenka suffer, suffers crippling headaches that he calls his iron mask. I just think this book sounds fascinating and really up my street. I've heard uh, really good things Things about his um, his previous work as well so uh, yes I'm really really excited to finally check this out and it's quite short as well uh, but once um, once uh, you know I've got these library books back and <laughs> I'll like actually get on board with some of these books that I've been meaning to read for the absolute longest time. Um, next up is uh, a book that um, I is it's sort of slightly out of my typical thing in some ways I mean I say that not in a kind of sn snobbish way, I don't generally tend to read much science fiction um, which you know is it's an area of liter literature that I really want to read a lot more of um, just because I, I kind of never really know where to start and so I always look to people like Larry over at Larry Has Opinions um, for his guidance on things like this because yeah I don't, I don't know where, what, where to go, what to do, who to start with who knows. Um, and uh, Larry did a really great video recently talking about The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin uh, and um, apart from having one of the, 
<laughs> the most terrifying thumbnails known to man. It's, it's wonderful. I love it. Uh, I, I, I really love the way Larry goes into this uh, book, particularly the kind of the ideas um, of it. So a large part of this um, book kind of features uh, this idea of an almost genderless society or, or a society that sees gender in a very, very different way to how we see it. And I think Larry does really a really great job in this video of not only selling the, the really beautiful elements of the book and the really interesting parts of the book, but also dealing with the, you know, the controversy or the kind of discussion that happened after the book um, around, you know, the, the fact that the the default gender marker is he in the book. But I think he does a really great, uh, Larry does a really great job at, at talking about how, why that was probably chosen and, you know, the kind of context around Ursula K. Le Guin talking about that. I've never read anything by her, um, so I'm really, really fascinated and intrigued to finally check that out. Next up is The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. Um, uh, DeWitt? I've never really known how to say this. Um, and uh, this was a, a recommendation from um, AJ Dunn, Reads and Writes. They have such an interesting way of talking about books anyway. And again, like Larry, um, they just have such an interesting range of, of reading in front of them at all times. It's, it's so fascinating because they will talk about books that I have absolutely never heard of um, and it, which is really exciting, right? And again, is dangerous for the TBR. But uh, I think what AJ Dunn does really well in this um, in in this video where they talk about um, the Last Samurai is to really talk about the beauty of this book. It's a book that I had heard a lot about um, and had kept on meaning to check out in some way, but it, you know, it's never really given any kind of priority. So this is sort of a task for me now to actually finally read the thing. <laughs> Um, and AJ Dunn does such a great job in explaining why it's it's something that I would probably quite enjoy. Um, so yes, that's that's that one. Um, and uh, next is a book that, in fairness, this has been on my TBR since it came out, just because so many people spoke about it um, in really great ways. Uh, and that is uh, The Death of Vivek OG by Akweke Amezi. Um, and I have read only one of their books before, which was Freshwater, which I really didn't get on with that much. I mean, I thought the writing was beautiful. I just found it just didn't work for me as a story. But um, I've been told that this is actually fairly common for some people. You know, some people loved Freshwater and have gone on to love the rest of um, uh, Amezi's works. But for me, uh, but also some people have, have found the opposite where they didn't get on with Freshwater at all and have loved Vivek Oji. And two booktubers who I think speak about this book um, really interestingly and have sort of sold it to me um, have been uh, Jennifer, uh, hang on, let me get this name right, Jennifer Loves Books. Okay, I was just trying to check if it's Jennifer Reeds or Jennifer, yeah, Jennifer Loves Books, um, who is relatively new um, and um, is, it's really exciting to welcome new people to booktube um, and really exciting to hear her thoughts on so many books um, and her plan. So I'd really urge you to go and check out her um, uh, newbie tag video. It's really interesting to learn a little bit more about her um, and exciting to see what she does next as well. So all good there. And also the other person I've heard speak about um, Vivek Oji is uh, Daniel over at Guilty Feet who does some, I mean Daniel's great anyway, but um, speaks about this book really intelligently and really cleverly. So I'd urge you to go and check that out as well. Next up, um, the wonderful gunpowder fiction and plot. I did it right in one take, yes! Uh, I, I struggle with their name somehow, my mind trips me up. But they are wonderful um, and they um, mentioned quite a few times recently um, a book that I was very, very excited to check out called Daryl by Jackie S. And this is a book I had not heard of at all, was completely not on my radar and I just, the amount that they spoke about how much they loved it, I just thought, okay, cool, let's check this out. And like, I mean, two things tell me straight away that I'm going to adore this. Um, firstly, there is a quote from Tori Peters, um, writer of Detransition Baby, talking about um, saying, calling it um, a brilliant novel of a seeker, like Pilgrim's Progress refracted by queer internet culture. Ding, ding, ding. This is <laughs> right up my street. And then, I mean, the more I look at this book, the more I'm just like in, in love and know that I'm going to adore this. Um, so the blurb reads as follows. Daryl Cook is a man who seems to have everything. A quiet home in Western Oregon, a beautiful wife, and a lot of friends to F her while he watches. But as he explores the cuckolding lifestyle, he finds himself tugging at threads that threaten to unravel his marriage, his town, and himself. I mean, come on. That is, like, that is one hell of a blurb. And then, I mean, the first line is... 
like equally you live you know you live vicariously through celebrities i live vicariously through the guys who f my wife but sure okay i'm the weird one <laughs> this is brilliant i am really really excited to check this out i have a feeling a very strong feeling that i will adore this or even if it's you know if it's not adore it'll be a, a strong like uh this sounds very very up my alley and a nice sort of change of pace from uh perhaps the book along list uh so <laughs> very very excited to, to check this little one out um and uh gunpowder fiction and plot um also spoke a lot recently about um another book that sounds really fascinating to me it's very very different from daryl in fact i think daryl is different from most other books um and that is nella larson's passing which is a book written quite a while ago but in many ways sort of um it, it kind of follows a sort of similar idea in some ways as something like Vanishing Half. So we again sort of have this discussion around essentially colorism and around the idea of passing as white in um, in sort of uh, amongst sort of either a kind of a black community or amongst sort of other white people um, and and sort of what that does to somebody and how how people navigate that very interesting tricky line in between um so i think that sounds really really fascinating and um again quite short <laughs> most of these are quite short apart from the last samurai which i think is quite long um about 500 pages or so but you know i think most of these are going to be books that i'm now reading a little bit more for pleasure because i kind of need it i mean not to say the, the book along this has been great i've been really enjoying it i think i just also do want to go and sit in a cafe for a while and just sit and read and not necessarily think about what it means for the long list um or, <laughs> or whatever in sort of grand overarching terms but uh, but yes so those two books um sound really really fascinating right up my alley and i also urge you just to check out gunpowder fiction and plot just because they're great <laughs> just simple as really um yeah that's all i've got to say on that another booktuber who i've been really enjoying uh watching is leo bancroft and um he does some really really interesting deep dives into um themes into various books talks a lot about the kind of social impact and social justice um which i just think is is a really great way of thinking about things and you know he's just a nice person um and i think he brings that that sort of sensibility and that that insight into the books he reads and sort of the themes he discusses so really really interesting please do go and check him out and um, a book that he mentioned recently that it had been one that I kept on hearing about but thought it might not be my kind of thing um, until I heard him talking about it and then sort of realized that my own assumptions about the book had been wildly wrong and that book is Camp by LG Rosen and so this book is um, as the name suggests about um, people who go to um, the, the, these these sort of two boys who are at a camp um, and but it also explores this idea of being like the good gay you know the kind of the one who assimilates the one who is in camp the one who is masculine and whatever and it really explores these ideas of um, uh, internalized homophobia of kind of femme phobia of all of these other sort of topics so it sounds really interesting it's also it sounds like it might be quite a nice easy read <laughs> um, it's a little bit less uh, intense from what I understand. I mean, it, it sounds like it has a really in-depth story, but it, it's sort of somewhat sort of young adult um, kind of story as well. So it sounds like it's really made for not only kind of, uh, you know, thinking about some of these difficult topics and these kind of quite thorny issues, but also just about having a really nice tale um, to, to read. So um, I'm really, really excited for that one as well. Um, and that takes us finally to um, to a booktuber who by no means, you know, last, definitely not least here, um, who is Eric Carl Anderson over at Lonesome Reader. And um, I feel like Eric and I basically sort of throw books at each other's way <laughs> quite a lot over time. of sort of just like, hey, I think, because our tastes generally overlap quite a bit. So generally, if I really enjoy something, I can safely sort of suggest it, uh, likewise from, from Eric. And I think um, uh, the, the one of the books uh, that, um, you can kind of see just here, I'll, I'll get it actually, um, is, uh, this is professional, um, is Mrs. Engels uh, by Gavin McRae, which I have been borrowing from a friend for a very long time and have mentioned in a previous TBR about reading, but then, you know, life and the Booker Prize happened, so that's somewhat delayed but Mrs Engels um is really really interesting um and it talks about kind of essentially workers rights as you may guess with Engels in the title but it essentially talks about um the kind of the unspoken characters in all of that so what are some of the sort of women and partners doing during all of this but also 
really exploring it and what, you know, and this is a book that Eric has, has raved about quite a lot and a book that I just think sounds fascinating. Um, particularly the, the writing style just sounds right up my alley as well. So I think I'll be checking that out. Um, alongside um, a book by Joyce Carol Oates. <laughs> um, he's finally won me over on this. Uh, I've read one book by Joyce Carol Oates before, which was uh, Rape, A Love Story, um, which is heartbreaking and harrowing, um, but really, really well handled, I thought. Um, and the book that I want to read um, by her that has just come out, so it's Breathe uh, by her, which is um, a book that looks really into grief and into into mourning and, and what that kind of looks like within our relationship. So um, it sounds, I mean, like a heartbreaking but really interesting and powerful book nonetheless. So something I'm very, very eager to check out and um, yeah, we shall see. Um, I'm sure there are many, many other books that I could have added to this list because my TBR is getting a bit out of hand. Uh, but uh, by all means, feel free to suggest other books in the comments that you think I might enjoy based on some of these books um, I've mentioned here. Equally, um, if you um, if you've read some of these books and have sort of any thoughts to share on them, I'd love to hear those as well. Um, and apart from that, uh, and same for any booktubers who you think I should be checking out, um, I'm very aware that there are many who I watch regularly who I've not mentioned here, uh, but um, all good nonetheless, please do keep recommending people to me. Um, and I want to thank uh, Shelley Sperinjan again for um, her video on this. It was a really great idea to think about that because I don't think I'd ever really put it into one place of what are all the books that I keep on telling myself I'm going to read that I then don't <laughs> or I like, forget about three months later. So this is now video evidence holding me to this. <laughs> this is accountability for me now to stay on track of, of reading these. Um, but anyway, uh, I've been Bob the Booker. Please do check out these booktubers I've mentioned um, and these books if they also sound interesting to you. And um, I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.